Thanks everyone for joining us for this special feature interview that we have in store for you during our COP26 events. Today I am here with environmentalist, zero waste advocate and all-round sustainability guru, <laughs> Laura, Laura Young. So firstly, Laura, um, we're really, really excited to have you here. Could you tell us a wee bit about what you do and what inspired you? Yeah, of course. Thank you so much for having me. It's great to see you all virtually and, and have this little chat. So, I mean, that was like a really brief introduction, but I guess it kind of explains a little bit what I do because my life just revolves around everything environmental. But I guess a bit of a backstory. At university, I did geography and environmental science, and then I did a master's in environmental protection and management. So my like academic background has always been in sustainability, and I've loved learning about climate and plastic and waste and how we can be more sustainable as a world but when I was at university I never really knew what to do with all this information I was sort of like what oh, is this all in my head what should I go into and obviously there's a career way that you can do that but I also felt really like oh, okay I should probably do something with my life and I should try and live a bit more sustainably as an individual so that was four years ago um and my kind of final year of university I really started to think about okay what can I do as an individual to become more sustainable, even if it's just playing my little part? And that's when I started learning about kind of reducing waste, zero waste, the circular economy, learning about carbon, carbon footprints, learning about how we can be more sustainable. And I've been on this journey, but because I've been on this journey, it's meant I've been able to kind of like grow a little space online where I talk about this and do a bit of environmental education and engage with schools and businesses and different organizations to talk about sustainability and right now at this kind of current moment what does my like normal week look like so I work part-time for a big NGO called Tier Fund and I'm their COP26 coordinator so at COP I'm going to be in the blue zone with them influencing world leaders hopefully but really just kind of yeah be, being there so my work has taken me to really cool places but I also do um on the days I'm not working there, I do a lot of kind of stuff in the media, stuff in the radio and um, stuff online through social media, trying to talk about sustainability and really just get it on everyone's radar and help explain a little bit more about what we can all do. So that's like very, very nutshell of, of what I do. I need to work out a more succinct way of saying all that. <laughs> no, I think it sounds fabulous. You're always up to so many exciting things. Um, uh, now, you obviously spoke a little bit about COP26 there and with that being such a focal point in everyone's lives at the moment, why is it important that we are engaging in the COP26 goals and the discussions around climate change just now? So COP26 is just one of the COPs that we've had. So as the name kind of suggests, we've had 25 of these conferences before, and these are two week long conferences that happen every single year, except last year, because obviously <laughs> don't need to say why, but these happen every single year and it's a time for almost every country, it's all the United Nations countries to come together to discuss climate. That does not happen at any other point in the year. And so this is the best chance we have at world leaders making big commitments and big changes and really sticking to what they've set out. And I think the weight that that holds shows that it's really, really important for all of us to get involved even in just little ways. So if whatever country you're from, for, for us that's Scotland, but you know, if you're a world leader, so Boris Johnson, because it's a UK thing, so he's the one going in on behalf of the UK government. If he was sitting going, oh, I don't think any of the UK care, you know, I've not seen anyone talk about climate. I've not seen any businesses doing so. If he, if he had none of this on his radar, he'd be going into that going, I don't know if my country care, you know, I don't know if this is a big deal for me, but he hasn't. What he's seen is he's seen marches and actions and petitions and businesses and schools like doing all this stuff. Because we're going, hello, we care, we care, we care, help us, help us be more sustainable, help my business be more sustainable. So hopefully he's one example of going in going, okay, this is what I'm thinking and this is what my team are thinking. And so around the world, what we hope is lots of people engaging in COP26, even if it's just tweeting about it, listening to a programme about it, emailing their MP about it, whatever it might be, 
it's showing that interest that this is a really important thing for the everyday person and that's why it's super important to engage because it's UN people sitting delegating and discussing and negotiating but we can hopefully influence that by showing rules of interest up until that point. Yeah amazing and we're all really wanting to do our bit in creating a more sustainable world I think especially with the focus on COP26 and everything that's coming out of it just now um, but for some people that can be quite daunting the thought of having to change things and they maybe don't know where to start how would you recommend that people start their journey and live in a more sustainable life? I know and you know this question often there's two things that sometimes put put people off the first thing is daunting like not knowing where to start so that's why a lot of my work is about breaking that down and trying hopefully helping people but the second thing is also some people feel guilty because often we think we need to be perfect so let me just take both those things off you at the moment because we don't need to feel daunted because we don't need to do everything all at once and we don't need to be perfect and take any guilt away because it's not our fault that the world is set up the way it is and it's our job to change it so that's what we can do but I think if you're interested in living a bit more of a sustainable life the great thing is there's a variety of ways that you can do that. There is ways that we can travel more sustainably, opting away from cars when we're on our own if possible, trying a flight-free holiday, thinking of car sharing or taking public transport or getting a bike. There's things we can do with our food choices. We can think about, is there a way I can reduce my food waste? Is there a way I can eat more locally, more seasonally, buy my food in less plastic packaging? You can think about fashion you can think about okay how can I buy less fast fashion how can I learn to sew so that I don't throw things away that was a big thing with me I had to learn how to sew you know can we buy more second hands can we rent clothes can we share clothes you can think about your home how can I heat my home in a way that's eco-friendly with renewable energy can I get insulation and double glazing can I try and set up things in my community like tool libraries or bike workshops and all of these kind of things that help us live a bit more sustainably for me how I started my journey I guess might help so I said I started this at the end of university and one thing that catapulted it was a new year's resolution wanting to be a bit more sustainable but it was also because I watched Blue Planet and I felt really guilty I was like that could have been me that could have been my little straw or my little you know plastic bag that that turtle was eating and that was my thing that I thought right that's how I'm going to start on my waist I'm going to start there and see where it goes and I remember the first thing I ever did was like a waste audit because I came home from this New Year's weekend away thinking I'm going to reduce my waste. I'm going to be great. It's going to be amazing. Plastic is never going to be in my life again. And obviously when you get home and you're looking around your house, you're like, that's in plastic. It's everywhere. It's also in plastic. Everything's in plastic. Okay. And you also start looking around going, and I don't know how to get that knot with plastic on it. And I have no idea what, what I need to do. So what I did is I, I did two things. The first thing I did was a sort of one by one approach so anytime something in my house finished whether it was a bottle of shampoo a tube of toothpaste or a bag of pasta I thought let's just have a quick search online to see if I can get this in a different way and what are the options and of course you find things so you find bars of shampoo or you find toothpaste tablets or you find refill shops for pasta right so there's like each thing one by one so if you were to think oh my goodness I need to find solutions to everything in this room today overwhelming you'll never do it but if you do it one by one it works so that's a good tip but the other one is about doing like a waste audit because for me waste is really really important because not only is it saving waste so like that's something that's not going to be on the planet that's great um zero waste scotland also came out with some great research and showed that 80 percent eight zero 80 percent of scotland's carbon footprint is to do with the good services and products that it makes and often that we all use just once and then throw away so like the stuff that we consume has like a really big impact on the planet as well in terms of carbon so when i did this waste audit i basically collected all my waste up for two weeks everything so like recycling non-recycling even if i was out and about i'd bring it home and just collect it all and at the end of two weeks i looked at it and i was like oh okay and I sort of sorted, sorted it out and put it all into different places and realised that actually half of my waste was all just to do with like lunch items. So it was like meal deal wrappers or like tubs from being out and about. And so I thought, oh, actually, instead of saying I'm going to try and get everything plastic free, I thought maybe this week or over the next couple of weeks, I'll just focus on making my lunch at home and trying to make it in a really like low waste way. 
or I'll also always try and remember a little tub so that if I want to get something when I'm out I can get it in a tub rather than a polystyrene box or whatever and that was like a really great way of just like knocking out huge chunks um of my waste at a time so those are like hopefully a couple of ideas but the best thing is there's just like so many ways that we can all be a bit more sustainable and I guess just to remind people it's not because me living a perfect life and being super sustainable is going to save the planet but when we all start to do things it starts to shift the way that we look at waste it starts to help industry and government see that we want more sustainable options and that's how we sort of like tip the needle over to be able to live in a more sustainable way that is more accessible and affordable and just like easier for everyone yeah I totally agree I think it's those small changes that you can make that really have the impact Um, and what about businesses though what kind of changes can they make so many I guess as a individual as a consumer I am often constrained to what I can buy or what services I can use because if I want to buy my weekly shop or I want to go and do x y or z get my hair cut buy an outfit I'm completely stuck with what businesses are offering and so often we need businesses to help us out and you know there's loads of different things that businesses can do they can so let's take you know a cafe for example if you've got a little local cafe or a food business, you know, anything kind of food related, you have a great opportunity there to be thinking about not only things like packaging, how we can move away from anything single use. So I guess a sort of side thing here is like, often we try and think about, you know, what is the best material that we can be using? And the answer is, well, if it's single use, it's rubbish. No matter what it's made of, if something is being created just once, to be, to be used literally once and then you're throwing it away. That is completely pointless. So it's thinking about how can we move towards zero waste, just using as little packaging as possible, or thinking about how can we do something that means we're reusing the packaging that we are creating, you know, reusing things time and time again to kind of keep that circular economy. And so really trying to like limit the amount of waste that we are producing. So if you've got a cafe or a food business, you can think about how can I serve my delicious food in a way that is not just producing loads and loads and loads of waste, but you could also think about the ingredients you're using, how to make them more sustainable, getting things as local as possible, using the greenest, you know, most sustainable items. How can you reduce your food waste? All of that kind of stuff. And that's just a couple of examples of the kind of decisions you can make but also for lots of businesses there's lots of kind of internal things that you can do even within your staff so one of the businesses that I work for we decided that we were going to ban internal UK flights so now if I want to go to London I have to get the train now that suits me fine I think really we all now know that getting the train from Glasgow to London really takes the same amount of time as flying when you actually add it all up. When you add it all up, yeah. (laughs) When you add it all up. And so one of the things we decided was we were like, okay, we're going to ban internal UK flights because they just are the most, you know, the, the most, they're the quickest way that you can spend carbon. But that was a decision that my company made. So as an individual, I decided long ago, I'm not going to fly to London anymore. But when my company did it, it was like, wow, that's made a huge impact, you know, much bigger than I could have ever done because I'm just one person. So companies and businesses can do lots of this stuff. And we saw it, you know, 10, 15 years ago when companies started to go paperless and that had a really big impact because it was saving a lot of waste. And so companies can do more and more like this. They can also look into the really boring stuff, but really important stuff like our banking, our pensions, you know, our energy providers, you know, how do we make all of these things more sustainable and more green and the best part about some of these other options things like pensions and banking is once you've decided to switch your pension to an ethical or a green fund you don't ever have to do that again tick done out the way and we don't really like to think about pensions anyway same with banking and so some of these things are also really quick fixes that you think once we kind of deal with this once we don't really have to come at it again and so there's other kind of different things and that's the best part that businesses can do a lot Um, and there's lots more support out there as well as we talk about sustainability like financially for businesses which is great and that's because the government are seeing that businesses want to do this because they're seeing that people want to be sustainable and hopefully putting them in the right directions. 
Fantastic. Now here at Young Enterprise Scotland, we are so impressed by everything that you've been doing and getting involved in. What have you enjoyed most about your journey? Oh, I don't know. I guess um, it's a hard one to answer. I think when I graduated from uni, I didn't really know what I wanted to do. So I knew I wanted to work in the kind of sphere of geography, the world, the planet, eco-friendly, that kind of thing. But I didn't really know what, what the jobs were out there. And I think probably one of my favourite things about the journey I've been on is actually just the people that I've been able to meet. Because through this, I've been able to meet young people, old people and everyone in between, business leaders like CEOs of giant energy companies through to three-year-old nursery kids asking me the hardest questions ever. And you're just like, ah, I don't know. And I think I've loved meeting people who actually all have the, the same passion and the same want, like people that I've met across the spectrum, whether it's in politics, in business, in schools, um, or just regular activists, people want a better, more sustainable future for everyone. We want climate justice and we want a world that is like clean and healthy for future generations. And what I've loved is just seeing that in a variety of different ways. You know, it's not like every day I'm meeting the exact same type of person and we're all kind of doing the same one thing. It's like you get to meet all of these different people from different industries and get to hear these really cool things that they're getting up to. And it's amazing because I think that makes me realise that I definitely, it's not all on my shoulders to fix this because we've got all of these amazing people doing it. And so that's been probably the best part of this journey. The most frustrating part is the last 18 months of all being on Zoom because I love meeting people and like going for a coffee, like having a coffee from home is not the same. But, you know, I think actually just meeting people and hearing like, wow, you're solving a problem I could never have solved because I don't have that expertise. But it's great to know that it's in a safe pair of hands. And so that has by far been the most um, amazing part of this journey is just the people, meeting the people. I love that. That's so hopeful as well that it's we're all in it together. <laughs> um, what kind of advice would you give someone who is trying to become an entrepreneur and wants to make sure that their startup business is sustainable? We support a lot of students who are starting up in business, but you know they're not a giant corporation who can make these big changes. What kind of little things could they maybe do at the beginning of their journey? Probably at the start of your journey is the best time to be thinking about this because I think when I've been speaking to businesses, one of the hardest things they have found, no ma actually no matter the size, is it's so much easier to start sustainably than to move away from business as normal. Like that is the hardest thing in the world because people are like, this is how we've done it. Even if it's for a year or for a hundred years, it's so hard to say, actually, we're doing a whole 180 on whatever it might be because we now know that we need to be sustainable. And so even though sometimes the sustainable option might feel a bit more clunky or it might feel difficult at first, there might not be as many resources out there to learn from or as much funding. The one thing I will say is it's so much easier to start off and say, this is how we are going to do things. Um, I guess like even, you know, a kind of example to maybe even show that even for big companies it's it's not that easy so an example that kind of hopefully this is easy to think about so there was a small cafe that's down in Kent a little local cafe in a community in Kent and one of the things that they realized was on their daily walks around their kind of local area in lockdown they did like only takeaway coffee in lockdown which loads of businesses had to do to like stay afloat so it's totally understandable but one of the biggest things they realized walking around their kind of local park was see all of the litter and all of the overflowing bins are just filled with our cups and our packaging because they were just constantly churning out all of this coffee tea cakes toasties and people were obviously having to dispose of that somewhere and they suddenly realized actually even though we're staying afloat as a business this is not sustainable. Look at all of this waste. And actually, it's now littering our local area. And they did this huge stunt. So they were in a fairly new cafe. They weren't like hundreds of years old. And they were only one. They were like an independent cafe. And they decided to bundle together, go out, litter pick the whole community, collect all of the cups that they'd found and bring them back into the 
cafe to do like a big stunt and they had this like ocean of cups and they decided to do a big public thing going we are officially not serving coffee and tea in disposable cups because this is the result and like this just isn't sustainable because it's just unnecessary so please bring your own cup we'll happily sell you it in a refillable thing great and they their business was booming because their local community was like oh my goodness you care like you care about our local area but you still like we love you you're a cafe great and so that's an example of how like a small cafe really early on in their journey decided to like invest in sustainability and it worked really really well because at the beginning of the journey they were like no like this is not good enough and we need to sort this now but on the flip side it's it's a negative story but kind of with a positive end and it's to give you a kind of example of how sometimes a big company decides to make a change and it's not easy so in England there's a massive kind of chain coffee shop called Boston Tea Party and they decided three I think three years ago now they were just going to completely do the same cut out single-use plastic cups they just said it's not it's not sustainable we are churning out thousands and thousands and thousands of these it's just unsustainable so they decided same as that little cafe but on a big scale our hundreds of shops are all going to stop serving it please bring your own mug in the first year they lost a quarter of a million pounds because people were turning up expecting to get a coffee and being told you can sit in and have it in a china mug or you can bring your own cup and people just said no and that's because as a big business it's hard to turn away now the good thing is I got in touch with that business um, after all of this because I was just so sad we don't have them here in Scotland or else I would have supported them at the time because that was a pretty cool decision they've now made the money back and they're now thriving but it's an example of how years after a big business might be you know like into their lifespan they decide to make a big change and it's not always easy now that decision they made saved more cups than that small little cafe could have ever hoped for but it also wasn't easy because it was shifting this you can imagine like a huge tanker the other way to go oh we're gonna do this so I guess it's just a bit of a story to be like at the beginning especially as a smaller business people will love that you're being authentic and saying actually I accept that this might not be the easiest path but this is important and also as we journey towards COP and into the future that we're building sustainability is going to become the, the norm so if you don't get on board now you'll be late to the party and it will definitely be harder so just go for it and if you need free promo let me know I'll happily show you if you're doing sustainable stuff <laughs> fantastic no that's such good advice I think I hadn't even thought of it that way before that starting off that way and just getting into good habits is such is such a better way to do it well, a lot of our students are aiming towards creating circular business ideas. So why is it important that more businesses are in line with the circular economy? The circular economy is a really fantastic model to, to be going on when we think about business, because as we know, waste is a huge problem around the world. And waste doesn't just equal stuff that then is left on the planet it's also lots of time and energy and resources into making things that are often just used once and then thrown away so about 80 percent of scotland's carbon footprint is just to do with these products services and goods that are used once and thrown away and so it's really important for businesses to be thinking about how can we minimize the amount of waste in general that we produce but also then thinking about okay if we do produce waste what can that waste therefore be used in either in your own business? So like, is there a place we could reuse this or is there somewhere else that we can pass this on to? And it's super, super important. And, you know, there's loads of different examples that you can think about. It's thinking about, you know, if you have a food business, you know, what can you do with leftover food that can't be sold? How can that be passed on? So at least it gets used once more before it gets thrown away or maybe you are a furniture business and you're thinking about okay we're making this furniture when it comes to the end of its life how do we make sure people aren't just sending it off to landfill how can we maybe try and get it back re upcycle it or maybe tear it apart separate the materials and those can be reused in some way and it's really important to be doing that because we are extending the life of a lot of the things that are already on the planet and that we've already produced and it's super important that we do this because it's one of the ways that we're going to enter into a world that's more sustainable with less waste and just make it the norm 
that we don't have, you know, bins full and landfills and dumps just full of stuff. And businesses have that opportunity. I actually did my dissertation, uh, my master's dissertation, kind of around like waste and the circular economy. And, you know, there's really cool ways. It's not even just thinking about, you know, okay, maybe you've got a cafe with food or a furniture business with sofas. It's also thinking about, you know, big industries where you might have a lot of construction waste or you might have things like waste water you know even just thinking about simple elements that you might be able to change around in a certain way and say actually any business needs lots of hot water because we use lots of hot water pumping through our industry for whatever you might be making but when it comes to the end we don't need it anymore so we normally just pump it out into wherever does anyone else need this where could we link up or what what's nearby and sometimes it's about doing it that way or about thinking differently you know there's loads of examples of um, kind of to go back to that kind of coffee cup example you know there's even lots of people thinking about a kind of deposit return scheme where you know you can I think a lot of kind of arenas and like sports grounds a lot of places have these sorts of things where you go and buy a pint or a coffee and you pay an extra 50p or an extra pound for your drink but it means that at the end you take back the plastic cup that's like a durable plastic cup that can be washed you get your 50p or your pound back and then they can reuse that cup once it's been washed and so it's even thinking that way about how can we make something once but then like be continually circulating it through and it's because we know recycling definitely is not the answer it's not efficient and it's not actually bringing stuff back into the loop it's a bit of a broken circle whereas the circular economy is about closing that circle and it's about keeping things going for as long as possible which is great thank you so much for all of your advice and everything that you've spoken about today i'm sure all of the young people we work with and all of their students will really really appreciate it i personally have absolutely loved this conversation and i know that there are certainly changes i'm going to be making i'm going to be learning how to sew i've decided yes <laughs> <laughs> so thank you so much for joining us laura um how can people kind of maybe get in touch with you or follow what you're doing yeah, so I exist online under the name Less Waste Laura. So you can come and find me on social media. And if you ever needed to get in touch, you can go to my website and there's my email on there. So you can just pop in a me email. I'd love to chat. That's great. Thank you so much for joining us today, Laura. It was really, really great.